Welcome back to another round of Basis Picks. As always, like, subscribe and share and all that good stuff. There are a lot of cards on this weekend, but none that are really of interest to the UK public, if I'm going to be honest. They're all on, you know, US time zones, even though they're not all in the US. Um, but that being said, there's some interesting fights on each card. So I'm just going to kind of go through each card as I see it. Uh, no splitting, no cutting, edit, anything, one take. We're just going to go through it and see how we get on. Uh, general thoughts and opinions on each fight. So uh, without further ado, I guess let's go. So the first one is the um, card that is taking place in Tijuana, Mexico tonight, which is a matchroom card, uh, which is Angel Fierro versus um, Brian Zamaripa. Um, okay, so that card, there are, uh, let's see, you've got uh sabrina maribel perez against sky nicholson uh, it's going to be sky nicholson on points uh not going to be worth watching federico pacheco jr so diego pacheco's younger brother the heavyweight is facing carlos cardenas now i know federico is four and oh at the minute uh three chaos in his last three fights he's still building um I expect him to win that fight. Um, I think it's a six rounder. His last four were four rounders. So I think this one might be a six. Um, but I'm expecting him to win. Whether it's a knockout or not, I'm not sure. I've never um, seen Carlos uh, Cardenas, so can't really comment. The most interesting fight on this card for me is Erica Cruz against Melissa Odessa. Or Melissa Odessa Parker, depending on how she wants to state it. Now, she is normally a bantamweight. And part of that, I remember what, there was a big thing where she wanted to obviously get a ch uh, chance at the Bantamweight titles and she was not allowed because she didn't have enough professional bouts, I think with the IBF initially, but she actually ended up beating, uh, at the time it was the reigning champion. Um, who was the champion at that time? It was Maria Cecilia Roman. And subsequently, uh, Roman ended up facing Ebony Bridges and Ebony ended up taking the IBF title off her instead. But Melissa, she was always a bit salty about not being allowed to, to get that one. Now, this fight, I believe, is actually taking place at Super Featherweight. Now, I haven't spoken to Melissa for about a year, a year and a half now. I think she, she dropped off of Twitter, kind of just dropped off of social medias after she had a bit of issues with her previous boss. Um, now, you've got Erica Cruz, who is was competing at featherweight she was the 126 wba champion um and she lost that to amanda serrano in her last fight which was an all-out war that took place i believe it was february this year that, that that one took place um now she's coming back now this fight is scheduled at super feather but uh from what i hear um Erica Cruz actually wants to go down to Super Bantam um, to see if she can win world titles down there. So interesting why it's at such a high weight. Melissa, they're both southpaws. Melissa is definitely the boxer puncher. She is um, the more technically put together fighter, but she's three years older than Erica with a lot less activity. Not her fault per se. Uh, she also has a bit of an MMA background as well. Um, so she's you know she's good on the inside getting in clinches and whatnot she can definitely work uh, work angles on the inside she's got good sharp compact shots and she's also got sort of long rangey shots as well um everything is sort of very textbook very very fluid um she her last fight even though it was a loss i've actually seen the footage of the fight now um she didn't lose that fight at all i, I don't know what the the judges were scoring um she applied the constant pressure she landed the effective strikes throughout every single round um i can only chalk it up to you know hometown hometown cooking because she yeah she did not lose that fight any way shape or form so she should still technically be undefeated right now as seven and oh uh, but she's six and one and you've got erica that's 15 and two i've spent a bit too much time on this one i think if it comes down to accuracy and placement erico should win 
this fight on activity. Uh, Melissa is better at sort of, you know, cleaner work, picking, picking the right shots. But Melissa is a naturally smaller, much smaller woman coming up several weight classes. I don't know if that's going to really stand her in good stead, but Erica just has an engine that goes from the first second of the first round to the last second of the 10th. And I don't know, if, I've never seen Melissa have to work at that kind of pace. And, you know, Erica will just throw punches in bunches in bunches and a lot of them won't land, but maybe two or three do. So for every two or three that land for her, um, Melissa might land one, possibly two. Now, unless she can really rock Erica, knock her down, um, Erica's just gonna keep coming forward. She's gonna just keep throwing and winging those shots in. And I think that she's gonna get this one on activity. So I'm gonna go with Erica Cruz on points, but I would love for Melissa Hernandez to win, uh, Melissa Odessa Parker, sorry, to, to win this one on on points or even a, a stoppage if she can get it so you know who my support's behind but yeah i do think erica wins this fight um on points um now angel fierro i haven't seen much of him uh, but i know the record 21 one and two um and i know um brian zari uh, zari he's i think 13 and one uh but he's only got four KOs, whereas i think angel has got something like 18 so to me, this is quite clearly, you know, the puncher versus the boxer, but I'm going with Angel Ferrero uh, via stoppage uh, around about sort of round six, round seven. And that's kind of, kind of do it for that card. Then you've got the um, top ranked card that is taking place in the States. There's also a, a, a PBC, I think it's a PBC card, like Joey DeVeco's on it, um, Kadir Albright. Uh, if you don't remember him, he, he in his last fight actually, um, is he the guy that beat, oh no, not the right, not the same person. So it's a, that's a different, I think that's Nadir. Oh, I'm thinking of Nadir Albright, not Kadir. So they must be brothers. Yeah, Nadir Albright was the one that, um, upset the apple cart in this previous bout uh yeah so that card i know jerry forrest is supposed to be fighting a guy this weekend as well um yeah there's a lot <laughs> there is a lot going on um all right let's get down to the other card so it's um luis alberto lopez versus joet gonzalez and that one is taking place um where's that one taking place i think that's taking place on the west coast in in the states Let me just double check that uh yeah so it's uh america corpus christi okay so uh with that one You've got Xander Zayas on the undercard against uh, Roberto Venezuela. Um, my money is on uh, Xander Zayas, and I'm predicting he's going to win that on points. Jermaine Ortiz versus Antonio Moran. Um, I think that Jermaine Ortiz wins this one comfortably. I don't think he gets a stoppage, though. I do think it goes the distance. Uh, you've also got Tiger Johnson on there. Um, I'm hoping he can get another KO victory, um, you know, to add to his sort of, uh, to add to his you know uh, his tally and then so in the final so Luis Alberto Lopez versus Joe Gonzalez with regards to this fight uh, Alberto Lopez is the more action fighter of the two sort of the you know he, he throws a lot sort of in the first half of a fight and then sort of you know starts to tailor off a little bit towards the end when the, the energy starts to deplete uh, Joe Gonzalez is very much a He's the type of guy that sort of is just steady throughout the fight. So even if he was losing the first set of rounds due to um, inactivity or, or the overactivity of his opponent, when it goes towards the back end, he normally ends up making up for lost time with sort of when he's still going steady and they're slowing down, he's able to pick them off and pick, uh, pick his shots a bit better, a bit more clever at those points. With that, um, now he, this fight does not end in a knockout. I think that Luis Alberto Lopez does just about take it on activity. I feel like he would do enough throughout the first eight rounds of the fight to win the majority of those rounds. And I think Joet Gonzalez will 
uh, once again, uh, you know, third time it will still be unlucky. I feel like he will lose a close points decision, but I think, um, yeah, Luis Alberto Lopez will do just enough to kind of get to get through and see and see out this one. So that's that fight. Um, I know there's a Showtime card on in. Uh, I think it's that one's based in Argentina. Um, yeah, I can't really say much about that one. Uh, I know Fight TV have got a show on. Uh, Walter Sequeira is also got. There is a lot on this weekend. Um, yeah, let's kind of get past all of that. And then you've got uh, the Golden Boy Promotions card, which is taking place uh, tomorrow, which is headlined by William Zapeda and uh, Macedo Hester. Uh, pff, let me just see if I can get to that card to figure out who's on the undercard of that one. Um, with me a sec because yeah there's a lot to kind of remember today apologies probably isn't the best basis picture you're gonna see but yeah i literally it, it wasn't worth doing the editing on this one uh let's see uh oh there's telford Okay, okay. so yeah, Williams Zapeda versus Masito Hester. You've got Victor Moraes against Edwin Palomares. Yocosta Valle is facing Maria uh, Santizo. Uh, Yocosta's gonna win that one on points. Um, just too active, uh, Santizo. Santizo can hit, but Santizo doesn't work particularly hard in fights and your cost of IA does um, so yeah that's more of a keep busy fight for her until they can finally get the undisputed on between her and Sinisa Estrada whether it actually happens I don't know who else is on this card um, no one that I know well uh, Eric Priest I kind of know him a little bit Victor Morales and Edwin Palomares I'm gonna go with Victor uh, I think he's got just enough to kind of get through that one to to be honest i think that he will um, probably stop edwin late so we're talking sort of around eight to nine look let's just get to the main event so okay williams are paid versus masito hester now uh masito hester is 34 three and three i believe and um williams are paid at the minute is 28 and oh i think he's got 24 stoppages in those 28 victories Masito Hester was the guy that they was initially going to give Ryan Garcia as his warm up to the Tank Davis fight. Um, to then Al Heyman and the team had said, well, if you take a warm up, then the fight's off. And then I think when Tank initially did then take his, his uh, tune up fight, so to speak, with Hector Luis Garcia in January of this year, that Ryan decided, no, I'm going to sit it out because I don't want to take any chances damage my hands get any cuts and stop this fight from happening and give tank a reason not to take the fight so um that was who they was lining up for ryan garcia so clearly um they look at him as their sort of their tune-up guy this very much is a keep busy fight for william zapeda um they looking obviously want to get him into title contentions at 135 Devin Haney still holds all the belts barring the WBC at the moment. Those will likely get relinquished at the moment. So this is probably just a killing time fight up until a point where William Zapeda can even get a vacant title shot or be put as the mandatory slash interim champion of that um, of the division to then pick up a title. So I don't see anything other than a William Zapeda stoppage um, and I'm predicting it's probably going to be through attrition so I'm looking at rounds 9 or 10 that's pretty much where I'm going with it um, guys any others leave them down below leave them in the comments like I said apologies this one isn't necessarily the greatest of basis picks but there's just uh, too many cards to go through and not enough interesting fights to, to talk about um yeah this is very much a, a marking time weekend which is very weird because it being sort of like you know mexican independence um the weekend and, and whatnot you would expect there to be a big blockbuster mexican card well there's tons of mexican fighters and mexican cards on but there's no big blockbuster mexican fights so i guess you've got to save that for two weeks when you have um you know canelo alvarez against um Jamel Charlo but yeah uh, leave yours down below thanks very much for watching and for right now that's base picks locked